Hello and welcome back. So, part two of how to reverse engineer type 2 diabetes. So, in part one, we discussed what actually is at the root cause of diabetes and insulin resistance. So, just a recap. So, first of all, excess calories leading to weight gain. So that is if you're over consuming food, doesn't matter what type of food it is, then you're more likely to um, gain weight. And we know that this weight gain, particularly the fat around the belly and the organs is particularly detrimental and can contribute to uh, inflammation in the body and so forth. Excess fat in and around the belly and the organs. So again, fat will block glucose out of the cells, contributing to insulin resistance. And we know that the fat around the belly and the organs acts like an organ in itself and will actually release these inflammatory chemicals and hormones that disrupt the body and contribute to insulin resistance. Excess glucose or sugar in the blood, also known as glucotoxicity. So the high blood sugar levels, or if you have high or excess glucose in the blood, this will contribute to the beta cell or pancreas burnout. And the high blood sugar levels as well will contribute to uh, damage to the pancreas and will cause the diabetes to progress. And the high blood sugar levels are also inflammatory. Excess fat in the blood, also known as lipotoxicity. So these excess fat molecules in the blood will also cause damage to the pancreas and the beta cell, contributing to the progression of type two diabetes. And again, they will uh, compete with glucose to get into the cells. And often they will win if there's glucose, uh, sorry, if there's insulin resistance around because they don't need insulin to get into the cells. And subsequently they will block the glucose out. Inflammation and oxidative stress. So we really do understand now that this inflammation, this chronic inflammation is at the root cause of many other chronic conditions, not just type two diabetes, including Alzheimer's disease, cardiovascular disease, depression, and so forth. Then stress, so stress will stimulate or activate the sympathetic nervous system, which is that fight or flight response, and will lead to high levels of cortisol, which is a stress hormone, and this will all contribute to insulin resistance. Poor sleep, so even one night of poor sleep will contribute to insulin resistance the next day and physical inactivity. And it's not just the, you know, when you're not moving, the act of sitting for too long is actually quite inflammatory. You're more likely to gain weight um, and it will also contribute to insulin resistance. So then, how do we reverse engineer diabetes? So now we know what is at the crux of it, we can start to work our way um, back. Okay, so now you understand what is at the root cause of insulin resistance. Now we can start to reverse engineer it. So starting with weight loss. So any weight loss is going to be very beneficial because you are going to help to open up those keyholes. So the insulin is able to work better. So reducing insulin resistance and you're also helping to reduce inflammation in the body. Second of all, physical activity or movement. So physical activity is often poo-pooed, but it is going to be instrumental in reversing your diabetes. So your physical activity works fourfold. First of all, when you're being physically active and you're moving, your body is using up the glucose and the fats in your blood to reduce the glucotoxicity and the lipotoxicity. Second of all, when you're being physically active, you are more insulin sensitive. So it's helping again to clear, clear out those keyholes and you remain insulin sensitive for many hours after your physical activity. So depending on what you did, you can be more insulin sensitive for 24 hours, even 48 hours 
after your um, workout or whatever it is, even if you're just walking or doing yoga. Thirdly, physical activity. When you're being physically active, you are building muscle and muscle is more insulin sensitive. So you are, again, helping the insulin work better. And lastly, if you're being physically active, it's likely that you are losing weight. And the fat that you actually get rid of when you're being physically active is the fat around your organs, in and around your organs. And this is a fat that is the most dangerous and is the most inflammatory. Um, so being physically active, you're basically melting away that fat around your organs. So do not underestimate the power of physical activity. So stress management helps to dampen down the sympathetic nervous system and it helps to reduce cortisol, which is a stress hormone levels, and it helps to um, ramp up the parasympathetic nervous system, which is the rest and digest. So this helps to, um, again, clear out the keyholes. It helps the insulin to work better um, and Overall, it actually has a anti-inflammatory effect. Then we have sleep. So having a good night's sleep and a good you know, sleep regimen is really important to help to reset all your hormones, um, including your appetite regulating hormones and your insulin uh, to help again, the insulin work better and also with weight loss. So both sleep and stress. Um, if you're not getting enough sleep and if you are feeling particularly stressed, this will also um, contribute to weight gain and it will also make weight loss very difficult. So by treating um, or you know addressing the, your sleep and stress, you are helping or promoting weight loss as well as um, the insulin sensitivity, so helping the insulin work. Then, Lucky last, nutrition or diet. So probably one of the most controversial areas um, at the moment in terms of, you know, its effect in diabetes and in particular in diabetes remission. So if we start first with carbohydrates, so yes, carbohydrates matter, but not all carbohydrates are created equal. So if you are consuming more of the processed and refined carbohydrates, so this is basically anything made out of flour or sugar or things that have been heavily processed, then because they've been so processed, it doesn't take much to break these down in your stomach because they've already been processed essentially. It's your stomach, when it digests food, it's processing the food. So these foods, when you eat them, you're actually it's like a big dump of sugar um, into your blood. So your pancreas is having to work overtime and it's really stressing out your pancreas. You'll see these big spikes in your blood sugars and these high blood sugar levels are inflammatory and your body needs to do something with those high blood sugar levels. So these will end up either being stored as fat or it will go to the liver and the liver will actually process these extra sugars into fat. So if you're eating more of the whole food carbohydrates, so these are foods that have not been heavily processed. So that includes your whole grains, your legumes, uh, some vegetables and some nuts and seeds. Um, so the, and fruits, sorry. Because these foods are, um, if they haven't been processed, they contain fiber. And if you think of fiber like the lattice structure that holds the food together, this makes it a lot harder to break down. So your stomach takes a lot longer to break this down. And subsequently, 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 <laughs> and subsequently, it's like a drip feed. So instead of a big dump of sugar into your blood, you get this slow drip feed. So you don't get big spikes in your blood sugars. You get this steady release of sugar into your blood. So your pancreas is able to manage these sugars. 
you don't get spikes so you don't get this inflammation setting in and then you're less likely to be storing it um, as fat but in saying that um, again if you eat too much of anything then you're going to end up storing it as fat the whole food carbohydrates are also really important because this fiber is an excellent source of food for your gut microbiome and we're now learning how the gut microbiome plays a really important role in diabetes as well as many other chronic conditions and this fiber um, will also help with appetite control, blood sugar regulation, um, and many other things that will help for, with weight loss and um, insulin sensitivity and you know, blood sugar control. So that is really carbohydrates in a nutshell. So the amount of carbohydrates and the type of carbohydrates matter. So if you're eating smaller amounts and spread across the day of these whole food carbohydrates, then your blood sugar levels are likely to stay you know, within that desired range. You're not going to get spikes. It's gonna help with weight loss and um, excellent source of food for your gut microbiome. So then if we talk about, all right, we know that this inflammation plays a big role. So how, do, how does food come in to um, things when we're talking about inflammation? So an anti-inflammatory diet, which contains predominantly plant-based foods, so that is your, again, whole grains, legumes, vegetables, fruits, nuts, and seeds. These are all very anti-inflammatory. So if we're talking about the fruit and vegetables as well, um, if you think of all the colors of the rainbow, it's the pigments in these foods that contain the antioxidants um, and phytonutrients, which help to reduce inflammation in the body. So these foods are all very high in vitamins, minerals, um, antioxidants, phytonutrients, and these are all really important. Um, they also help to clear out that keyhole to help the insulin work better. Fat. So not all fats are created equal. If you are consuming uh, saturated and transaturated fats, then these are really the ones that uh, get into the cells and block the glucose out. So these are the most troublesome types of fats. And saturated fats are found predominantly in plant, sorry, in animal-based foods. And transaturated fats you find in most of your processed foods, um, as well as these you know, really processed oils. And these saturated fats and transaturated fats are readily oxidized. So they're very prone to oxidation in the body. And when they're oxidized, they lead to more inflammation. So the type of fats you eat are also important. And remember, if you're eating fats and carbohydrates together, so if you're eating a meal that's high in fat and high in carbohydrates, because you've got insulin resistance on board, the fats are going to get in first and they're going to block the carbohydrates out. If you're eating fat in excess, um, again, that will contribute to the lipotoxicity and you're more likely to also store that as fat. If we talk about protein, so, the evidence is very clear that the more animal protein you eat, the higher the risk of diabetes. And there's lots of reasons for that, um, which I won't go into today because it's just gonna create a whole lot of um, confusion because this is probably enough information to digest, but I will go into it in more detail in another episode. But there are lots of reasons why animal protein contributes to insulin resistance, um, but it also contributes to that underlying inflammation. And on the reverse, the evidence is also very clear that the more plant-based you go, the lower the risk of diabetes. And again, that is really the phytonutrients, the vitamins, minerals, and antioxidants that help to reduce inflammation and open up those keyholes. 
So if you're looking to reverse your diabetes for good, I'm not talking about a temporary fix, I'm talking about lifelong remission. Well, now you know what is at the root cause of type 2 diabetes and insulin resistance, you can start to reverse engineer it. So first of all, um, reducing your total energy intake or total calories that you're consuming to try and promote weight loss. Intermittent fasting is a really novel way to do this. Uh, reducing fat in and around the belly and the organs. So again, you can do this through weight loss, but also physical activity is going to be really important to reduce the fat around the organs. Then reducing um, glucose and sugar in the blood. So being mindful of the type and the amount of carbohydrate that you're eating. Reducing fat in the blood. So being mindful about the fats that you're eating, again, the type and the amount of fat, um, particularly in particular reducing animal uh, intake, which contains saturated fat, as well as all your processed foods that have um, these trans saturated fats and these processed oils as well, which are also inflammatory. Reducing inflammation and oxidative stress. So, weight loss will help to reduce the inflammation as well as um, having a very anti-inflammatory diet and lifestyle. Stress management um, will help to improve the insulin sensitivity. Proper sleep, again, will help to regulate all your hormones and insulin and to help the insulin work better and assisting with weight loss. And lastly, physical activity. So just moving more, and this is going to help fourfold as we previously discussed. So as you can see, diabetes, the root cause, it's way more complicated than some people make it out to be. And the things that we've discussed today are really, um, you know, an overview, and it does get even more complicated than this um, we know, as I've been talking about, the gut microbiome plays a big role. Um, there's so many other in, you know, environmental um, toxins and things that can also contribute. So it's far more complicated. Um, but if you understand this, then you understand how you can start to really reverse the insulin resistance, which essentially is going to reverse the type 2 diabetes. So I hope this has been helpful and insightful and feel free to share this with your friends and family. And uh, if you found it interesting and helpful, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Um, all right. Thanks, guys.